There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another book review, this time of Soviet Milk by Nora Ekstina. Please excuse the construction noise behind me. I've filmed in this location while well, that construction was going on in the past and it doesn't sound nearly as loud on the video as it does in my ear. Hopefully it'll be okay. I did this as a buddy read with Britta Bowler. And how wonderful an experience was that? The first of many buddy reads, I hope. And this is a novel, the translation published this year by Pyrene Press, which does a lot of uh, translated literature. The original Latvian edition was published in 2015. This is translated by Margita Gailaitis. First, a word about where you should start on Booktube with watching reviews. My review is going to be decidedly mixed, and you might want to start with some more positive reviews. There are three that I would recommend. What Camel Reads has a great review on his channel. I'll put all these links in the show notes. Eric. Carl Anderson has a great review with some Latvian baking instruction included on his channel and he also has a lengthy fantastic review on his lonesome reader blog including a, an interview with the author which I'll talk about in a minute and thirdly Dane Reads reviewed this book after he spent some time in Latvia earlier this year and his time spent traveling visiting Latvia really informed his reading so I would highly recommend all of those and maybe don't I say this when I kind of am the odd man out but maybe you don't want to start with me maybe you want to go to theirs and, and come back to mine that being said Soviet Milk is a novel about three generations of women especially the mother and the daughter the grandmother doesn't figure so much in this story even though her presence is kind of always in the background the daughter, and this is a heavily autobiographical novel, but the daughter came of age just as the Soviet Union was starting to crumble, late 1980s. The goes right up until the fall of the Berlin Wall. And so her mother came of age, was born a World War II baby, and the scene of her mother's birth was just a harrowing scene, and just in the first few pages, it was just rips your heart out and then came of age, you know, grew up during the Soviet rule in Latvia. The novel would have us believe, and I think it's definitely at least partially true, that the mother's living under a totalitarian regime wounded her and warped her so that she could not mother her own child. These three women are unnamed, so I will be referring to them as the grandmother, the mother, and the daughter. So the mother could not mother, could not mother her own daughter, and that was first evident when she refused to breastfeed her and actually ran away from the nursery for several days just so she wouldn't have to, and so her, until her breasts dried up. And that is one of the themes and the symbols throughout the novel. That's the main symbol. And in fact, the original Latvian title was Mother's Milk and the English title is Soviet Milk. Both work equally well because the idea, as Ekstina herself said in her interview with Eric, was that the Soviet mother, Mother USSR, Mother Russia, breastfed her satellite states with all this evil communist totalitarian violence and mind control the mother didn't want to pass that on to her child symbolically so here's what I liked about this novel I loved the way that Ixtina narrated the relationship between the mother and the daughter alternating chapters point of view as Camel noted in his review it's a little disorienting at first because each point of view chapter is talking about their mother in the first few chapters but you soon realize that it's the mother and the daughter that are narrating but there's no names the mother is so wounded so 
off kilter, so mentally ill, for whatever reason, that the relationship, as soon as the daughter becomes a teenager, the relationship really, uh, the mother, the daughter is mothering, taking care of the, the mother. The mother is a doctor, but something happens when she is studying in Leningrad, where she gets in trouble with the authorities, and they hound her, and they blacklist her and exile her from Riga, which is where she lived with her family, to uh, out in the boonies of Latvia, and where she's able to do, to have a kind of a medical, a gynecological medical practice there. But all of that is very soul-destroying for her, and she's suicidal, and I'm not going to say any more, but the relationship between the mother and daughter is really well drawn. You really... I really entered into that part of the novel, and it is the heart of the novel, viscerally. I also learned quite a bit about Latvia. There's references made to various Latvian writers and poets, and I googled them and was really interested to find out more. And by the way, Dane Reads has a wonderful series on Latvian literature, so don't only check out his review, but check out his other uh, Latvian literature videos and try Eric's buns. <laughs> Unfortunately, this novel was not a success for me. I thought it was a hot mess. So let me explain what I mean, and my longtime viewers will be able to hopefully separate what's just Sean's stuff, like, oh, Sean wouldn't like that book, but I probably would. And like again, please take into account the three much more positive reviews that I referred to, but I thought this was a hot mess and didn't work for me completely. It was a three-star read for me, and largely because, to me, it was really clunky the way that Ixtina used symbols in this book. Now, a lot of that could possibly be explained by culture and the literary culture of Latvia or Eastern Europe. I haven't, I'm not widely read in modern East European Russian literature. But I thought the way that symbols, especially the milk symbol, was employed, it was like she was banging me over the head again and again. This is the symbol. This is the symbol. Did you get it? Oh, here's another symbol. Here's another symbol. It just made me sick. So I read in Eric's great interview that Extina talks about the, the milk symbol. It's the essential liquid of life. It's a metaphor, the poisoned milk of our homeland. It's also very poetical, and she says in Latvian folk songs called Dinas, we have many sayings about milk. For example, water is warm like milk, milk rivers, etc. And that all went into the novel. That's great. Didn't work for me. It made, it really bugged me. I mean, it could have been done so much more subtly and been so much more powerful. But every five pages, there was some reference to milk. And uh, I, I just, it just <laughs> was overkill. And I don't like to be banged over the head with what the book means. Not only that, but there was about a dozen other symbols. And it wasn't like, they weren't images, they were symbols. Like, and you had to really, you were told on no uncertain terms that here comes another symbol. The characters talked about them as symbols, and that just drove me crazy. So there's a hamster named Bambi. The daughter makes, in sculpture class or art class, she makes a clay baby. There's the name Jesse, which does it mean Jesus? Is it a man's name? Is it a woman's name? And then there a character who emerges named Jesse, who is an intersexed character. And all of that is symbol, symbol, symbol. The character Winston from the Orwell novel, 1984. The character Ishmael from Moby Dick. I'm going to read you one because it's a short passage about the frosted bulrushes. It's perfectly illustrative of what I didn't like. Here's Jesse and the mother. They're walking by the river. The meadows led back to the overgrown riverbank where bulrushes browned and shimmered, touched by the first frost. 
Look, said Jessie, they've not turned to fluff. They've just frozen. Jessie, what shall I do? My soul is sorrowful enough to die. It's frozen, I said, looking on as she touched the bulrushes. And I wrote in the margins, puke! Like, just give me the image. I Let me do the work. Let me make the connections. Don't do this overt. Here comes another symbol. Ooh. So that really frustrated my reading of this book. Then we get a carp so beautiful it can't be killed, which cure, momentarily cures the mother of her Winston pathology. Then there's a bell with its tongue torn out, and we have this heavily symbol-laden conversation between the daughter and the mother about the daughter says, I think that's a symbol of you. When the daughter's much younger, the mother helps her dress up in a carnival costume, which is kind of like a split personality, and that becomes a symbol running through the text. And when also when she was young, there was a picture the mother drew for her daughter. She was a gynecologist, and she drew a simple sketch about of a mother and baby joined by an umbilical cord, and that becomes a symbol. And these things are not only announced in such a bang over the head way every time they surface in the deck, but they clash against each other. Within three pages, you can have four symbols, and they don't smoothly flow one to the other, and it was just symbolic overkill. It made me not enjoy this novel. Now, again, literary culture could explain that, literary traditions. I'm just saying I didn't enjoy this book, and I'm glad others have, and maybe you will. Still, it's a book that I won't soon forget. It was my first exposure to Latvian literature. I'd be curious to read other Latvian novels to see if some of the things that I objected to here are just part of the literary culture, and maybe I would get used to them. It was a poignant and powerful portrayal of the mother-daughter relationship, living through totalitarianism. On that level, it was a success. That is my mixed review of Soviet Milk by Nora Ekstida. Thanks for watching.